How's it going, everyone? It's Avi from Mother SpongeBob Thousands Today. is October 13, 2021, and today we're going to once again forecast the winter, the 2021-2022 winter season and determine whether or not we'll experience a colder than average winter, a snowier than average winter, or a drier and less moist than average winter in your area in the United States, as I will be giving continuous updates on the winter as we head closer and closer into the winter season. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather related content make sure to like if you like this video and make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather related content so let's begin by taking a look at one of the key indicators that really gives a good indication of whether or not we'll see a quarter than average winter or snowier than average winter and it's the enzo outlook so pretty much in this video i'm gonna be going over all the factors in my previous winter videos i go in, i don't delve so much into specifics but in this video i'm gonna go all all in with the specifics so we're gonna first take a look at the enzo outlook and you see that over the next several months into the winter season the most likely scenario is is that we will be in a la nina and it's not until the months of february and march where the chance of a neutral phase does become higher than a la nina phase but majority of the winter which primarily includes december and january and even as early as november we're going to be in the la nina phase and that should really give a good indicator of what to expect this winter throughout the united states if we were to take a look at the typical pattern during a la nina for the united states you see that um, the, a lot of the northern United States experiences typically colder than average conditions because we see that polar jet stream dip further southward and that brings a lot of that cold Canadian air further southward. We typically see more moist than average conditions as well as cooler than average conditions along the Pacific Northwest during a La Nina. However, for a lot of the southern United States, we typically see warmer and drier than average conditions because the subtropical jet that typically moves through the southeast won't be, will be absent or around the southeast and that is and that's one of the primary sources of where a lot of these troughs and a lot of the moisture come from during the winter in the southeast so since there isn't a subtropical jet moving through the southeast or the south in general it's less like you guys will experience a lot of precipitation during a la nina winter as simply most of the more moist and average conditions will occur along the northern portion of the united states and we'll also see colder than average conditions as a result of bigger jet stream dips bringing that very cold canadian air further southward during the winter so this should be a pretty good indicator of what to expect this winter but there's still uh many more factors we need to consider before we jump into that conclusion now take a look at the la nina intensities over the past pretty much 100 years you see that um we've been measuring um based off of these la nina years i compared it to the long-term average when it comes to temperature and precipitation and if we were to put these la nina intensities into a data plot that compares the temperature and the precipitation of la nina years to the long-term average you're going to see that during a la nina year typically a lot of the northern united states experiences colder than average temperatures for the most part and it's especially noticeable in the northern portion of the united states the northern portion of the midwest as well as the northwest as well as the pacific northwest as well where we see uh, average temperature go hover right around um, three degrees below average for the winter time so of course it me it would mean that the chance of a colder than average winter is a lot um, more likely in the northern United States during La Nina and you see the quarter than average conditions even extends along the east coast as well as a lot of the northeast coast so you guys should expect a quarter than average winter for the most part throughout the northern United States and even extending to California as well and while I don't think it's going to be necessarily quarter than average in California despite what typically happens during La Nina thanks to a drought but there is still that possibility that the north the northern portion of California will experience colder than average conditions during a La Nina. The only places where it's not necessarily colder than average is the southeast where it's primarily average during a La Nina compared to the long-term average but for the most part most of the United States experiences colder than average conditions throughout the United States during a La Nina. So that's definitely something to consider when making this forecast. Now taking a look at the precipitation anomaly you see that 
Um, the Pacific Northwest, of course, experiences more moist and average conditions as a result of a Pacific jet moving through. That brings a lot of troughs along the coast of the Pacific Northwest that definitely moisten up the atmosphere and really bring a lot of brings a lot of precipitation along the Pacific Northwest. So it's not very surprising we see more moist and average conditions during the La Nina in the Pacific Northwest. However, you see for most of the southern United States, it's typically a lot drier than average. So you guys should experience more sunny days, less rainy days in the southeast, which is definitely good news for some people. Some people prefer the snow. I personally prefer the snow during the winter, but I'm sure many of you guys in the southeast will be happy. It will likely be drier than average and probably most likely warmer than average as a result of the dry than average conditions and you see that this even extends further into the northeast however i do not expect the northeast to necessarily have less precipitation than average because the more jet stream dips we see from la nina the more moist it becomes and also sea surface temperatures are much warmer than i just off the northeast coast so i think it should moisten up the atmosphere just a little bit right along the northeast but for the most part, it's the United States is average when it comes to precipitation during the La Nina, with the exceptions of the Pacific Northwest and the southern United States, which is typically drier than average. Now, taking a look at um, the snowfall patterns during La Nina. Now, this is important because not only does this represent that um, how much snow you typically should expect during a La Nina. It also gives a good representation of what type of temperatures you should expect because of course when it snows more it's you're bound to it's bound to be a lot colder but it's not only that when there's more snow on the ground that snow absorbs a lot of that short ray radiation from the sun during the melting process which cools down the area around it and if there's more snow on the ground chances are it should likely be a much colder than average winter so while the snowfall patterns definitely give a good representation that this will be a snowier winter it also gives us a good idea that it will be a colder winter as well so that's definitely something we should expect in the areas where more snowfall than average is likely such as the pacific northwest portions of the great lakes as well as the interior portions of the northeast typically do experience more snow than average during a la nina and in areas such as the new mexico area and even portions of mid-atlantic they typically see drier than average snowfall patterns during a la nina but i don't expect it to last more strictly in the northeast because we should see more jet stream dips most likely this year as a result of a negative arctic oscillation and the, uh, the warmer than average sea surface temperatures should definitely fuel nor'easters to bring more snow and precipitation overall along the northeast coast so i don't expect it to be necessarily drier than average when it comes to snowfall in the northeast just because of those just because of those things now um now let's take a look at the cfs computer model let's first take a look at the precipitation anomaly and for the month of november it's forecasting a lot of the united states to be drier than average and this even includes the southern portions of the great lakes region um it of course includes the west coast which isn't a surprise because you guys are deep in drought and but this also um, includes the southeast deep in drier than average conditions if we were to move forward into december you see the more the atmosphere is expecting to moisten up right around the midwest so we should see more snow than average especially during la nina where we see more prominent jet stream dips and um, headed into January, the more moist and average conditions continue to the north um, to the northern United States, which pretty much coincides with what uh, La Nina typically brings in northern United States. So no surprises there, as this definitely adds on to this definitely helps um, contribute to the fact that we're more likely to see more snow in the northern United States. So that's definitely something to consider. And you see the southern United States still remains drier than average for most of the winter, which pretty much agrees with the La Nina forecast. So I'd expect more snow than average in the northern United States and drier than average in the southern United States. Thanks to the pretty much the agreement between the climatology models as well as what typically happens historically speaking during a la nina now taking a look at the now let's take a look at the two meter temperature anomaly and um what's surprising is that the cfs model is forecasting december to be much warmer than average this even includes 
the northern Midwest, which typically experience much colder than average conditions, but expects January and February, especially for the extreme northern portion of the United States, to be colder than average. So that's definitely something we need to keep in mind. But I would take this computer model with a grain of salt when it comes to the temperature forecast because it's somewhat contradicting what typically happens during the Niña, where we see more of the United States experience colder than average conditions, while it's it's mostly correct for the southern United States. We typically see warmer than average temperatures during a La Nina. Um, for the northern United States, it's somewhat um, contradicting what typically happens during a La Nina because the cold air typically dips further southward than what the CFS model is saying. So I'll take it with a grain of salt as more likely than not, we'll see a much snowier and colder than average winter throughout the northern United States for this year. Now, taking a look at another i'm um, taking a look at the drought monitor throughout the united states which is another very important factor when determining whether or not we'll experience a very po um, potent winter or a very cold or warm winter and you see that for a lot of the western united states pretty much extending from the rocky mountain range westward you guys are deep in a drought and what this means is that if you're in a drought it's typically a lot warmer than average because of course when there's less clouds in the sky that means that you're more like um the sun the short wave radiation is less likely to reflect back um uh, reflect off the clouds or the clouds to absorb that short wave radiation from the sun so of course the ground absorbs more of that short wave radiation to warm up the area but also it's of course, during a drought, it's a lot drier than average, and we see that during a drought, it's very difficult for it to go away. So, I'd say more likely than not, especially south southwestern portion of the United States, which already typically experiences a drier than average um, winter during La Nina, the drought should continue. So, I'd expect warmer and drier than average conditions for southwestern United States, while I expect differently for the northwestern portion of the United States as I do expect a Pacific jet stream to move through that area and sort of moisten up the atmosphere during a La Nina. Um, I expect the southwestern United States to stay in a drought and that should definitely warm up and um, dry out the atmosphere overall for the southwestern portion of the United States. So that's definitely something that I'm considering when making this forecast. Um, next thing we gotta take a look at is the sea surface temperature anomaly because of course um, it's very important when it comes to temperature and how much lift there is in the atmosphere when the sea surface temperatures are a little bit warmer you're more likely to get lift in the atmosphere and not only that the air temperature is more likely to be warmer as the sea surface temperatures are a huge part in determining what type of climate your area expects um, should expect and if we were to take a look you of course see the core than average temperatures as we're approaching a la nina around the equatorial region but not only that taking a look just off the east coast the sea temp temperatures are well above average so it should there is a possibility that we could see the temperatures especially along coastal cities be a little bit warmer than average because the sea surface temperatures are warmer than average and that heat energy should transfer into the atmosphere around it but um, i don't think it's going to be necessarily enough to completely offset the um to completely offset the fact that there's a la nina but I don't think it's going to be as cold, let's say, in the northeast as it could be typically during a La Nina, thanks to the warmer than average heat surface temperatures. Of course, if this were to continue, we could see it cool down back to average or below average during the winter, especially if we're in the negative Arctic oscillation and a La Nina is occurring. But um, for now, it could actually raise up the temperature from being as cold as it is in the northeast, thanks to warmer than average heat surface temperatures. And for the southeast, um, the warmer than average sea surface temperature should contribute to a warmer winter overall, I'd expect. And for the west coast, you see just off the coast of California, the sea surface temperatures are cooler than average, but we're still in a drought. So I'd say it's still going to be warmer than average, but it should maybe cool down the atmosphere just a little bit right along the coast of California. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. Um, now, 
Um, taking a look at the Arctic Oscillation, which is another key factor when determining what type of winter we should expect. Um, you see that we've been in the negative for most for the most part since I'd say right around um, just approaching August and headed into the mid October. Pretty much for the most part, we've been negative Arctic Oscillation, and the forecast is a rebound us back into a positive Arctic Oscillation. So it's going to be very difficult to forecast what type of phase we'll be in by the time we hit the heart of the winter which is mostly i'd say around january and february but um the typical rule that i like to go by is that uh, a phase typically lasts for one to three months of course between that period you might see some slight variations um within the forecast such as these low bumps into the positive phase right here but for the most part it remains at a certain phase between one to three months we've been in a negative arts constellation phase for around one to three months so i think we are bound to have another uh to enter a positive arts constellation phase that should last one to three months which would mean that by the heart of winter we could rebound back to the negative phase which i expect will bring us a quarter and average winter during the heart of winter throughout the united states so that's definitely something we need to keep in mind. And in terms of what typically happens during uh, positive arc constellation, the westerly winds are a lot stronger, um, which means that the cold air is less likely to divert further southward into the mainland United States. So it's typically a lot warmer than average um, and less storms during a positive arc constellation during um, the United States. Um, at, during winter in the United States. However, during a neg negative Arctic Oscillation, it completely changes where the westerly winds are quite weak, so the cold air is more likely to divert from the southward into the mainland United States and cool down the atmosphere overall. So that's something, something we need to keep in mind. Um, Daniel, now, here's my official winter 2021-2022 forecast as of October 13, 2021. Um, you see that um, for a lot of the northern United States, be thanks to the fact that the La Nina is for, um, typically during the La Nina, we experience cold than average conditions and snowier and average conditions in the northern Midwest, as well as the fact that the CFS model wants to bring more, not only more moisture than average, but a quarter than average winter throughout the northern United States. I expect the northern Midwest, extending the Great Lakes and um, even interior portions of the Northeast as well, to experience an extremely cold and snowy winter. This includes cities like Buffalo, um, Cleveland, Detroit, Chicago, Milwaukee, Minneapolis, they all should experience a very an extremely cold and snowy winter for this year. Just out of that, I expect it to be cold and snowy still, just not um, to the certain extent um, of the northern Midwest. So, as still, um, which includes cities like Denver, Colorado, St. Louis, um, Louisville, Kentucky, as well as Pittsburgh, they, you guys should experience a colder and snowier winter than average, just not to the extent of the northern United States, I'd say. And for along the east coast, I expect the northeasters, many northeasters and blizzards to occur. The above average sea surface temperatures will contribute to um, more instability overall for a lot of the troughs that move off the Atlantic, off the coast to develop into powerful nor'easters and blizzards. So I expect more nor'easters and blizzards to occur as a result of that. Just south of that, I'm expecting a winter mix. I think you guys should experience um, those in the winter mix area should experience um, things um, t times where it feels like winter, but other times where it feels like fall and doesn't even feel like winter at all. So I'm expecting a winter mix in that area um, for the Pacific Northwest. I'm expecting it to be cool and moist, which typically happens during the La Nina. We typically see more moist than average conditions as well as cooler than average conditions. But for the southern United States, for the most part, I expect it to be warmer and drier than average with an emphasis more on the Southwest thanks to the drought that's ongoing and I don't expect it to go away. So I expect a warmer and drier than average um, weather conditions throughout the southern United States overall. So this is my winter 2021-2022 forecast. If you want even more in-depth forecast regarding um, um, the, um, for your location, just comment down below and I'll give an estimate of how many inches of snow you should expect for this winter. So make sure to comment down below if you want an even more specific forecast for your area. But 
Um, I guess that's it for this video. I thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather related content. Make sure to like if you like this video and make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather related content. And I hope you guys all have a great day.